Welcome back to the Rams franchise. My name is Mr. Hurricane, and today I'll be recapping the Season 3 off-season that was live stream on Monday afternoon. If you wish to watch the live version instead, the link to that is in the description below. But we're not going to waste too much time with the recap. Of course, the Rams went 13-3, a very successful season that led us all the way to the Super Bowl, where the St. Louis Rams collected another Super Bowl ring. This year we showed we had a ton of talent on both sides of the football. The defense was constantly getting turnovers and the offense put up a lot of points. And they never really missed a beat when Demarius Thomas was hurt earlier in the season and missed a good chunk of the year. And then Tavon Austin went down for the last three games of the regular season. And you can't forget about the great year that Ben Tate had with almost 1,500 rushing yards. A lot of guys on defense had big years including James Laurinaitis and Janoris Jenkins. It was a true team effort as we won the Super Bowl. But we're not done yet. We're transitioning to Season 4 and trying to gear up for another Super Bowl run. It's time for the offseason and first order of business is resigning free agents. And we have a lot of key ones with $40 million roughly in cap room. We just got done with Sam Bradford's rookie contract which gave him over a $20 million cap hit in his final season. I had no interest in giving him anywhere near that number. But we'll get back to Sam Bradford soon. Janoris Jenkins has been our number one cornerback and has definitely played like one. I was willing to give him big money. He wanted around $8 million a season, but he turned down the contract offer and would test free agency. How about Tremaine Johnson, who became a starter this season with Alteron Vernon now shifted to the nickel responsibility. Tremaine only wanted a little over a million a year, it looks like, so I offered him a $5.25 million contract, and he decided to test the waters of free agency along with Janoris Jenkins. How about our kicker, Greg Zerline? You're not going to find many guys with a stronger leg. And we offered him a deal that he also turned down. This was not the start to free agency I had envisioned. Next, we have Robert Quinn, who wants a little over $5 million a season, offered him a $24 million deal. He's going to test along with everybody else that's been offered. Another starter testing free agency is Michael Brockers, who wants $5.5 million a season, but I wasn't too interested in that number. How about Ryan Spadola, who was a depth receiver for us, our preseason MVP? Offer him a deal, and he's the first to accept. I guess that's one out of the way, but we have a lot of starters hitting free agency, and let's get back to the elephant in the room, Sam Bradford. If you've ever read the comments on one of these episodes, you know that not many people are fans of Sam Bradford. A lot of people have wanted him replaced every year in this franchise, but for $6 million a season, I am comfortable keeping Sam Bradford as our quarterback and taking the flack for offering this contract. But Sam Bradford turned down the offer, and he will test free agency. I think it's become clear how big free agency was in this offseason. Normally the draft is the focal point and the offseason is very exciting. This was sure to be exciting, but it was a little tense not knowing how many players we were eventually going to keep. Offered a contract to Isaiah Pete and luckily he actually accepted, so we do keep a backup running back who played pretty well for us this past season. With two quarterbacks hitting free agency, I definitely wanted to keep Jason Verrett for a very cheap contract. I offered him $850,000, and then we offered Harvey Dahl a backup guard just trying to keep some of this depth intact, and then we can worry about the starters later, and both those players accepted their deals. Another depth player I wanted to keep is Darren Bates, who had to start a good deal this season and played really well in the absence of Corey Nelson. Also wanted Shiloh Keo to stick around, offered him a three-year contract, and he joined the group of players testing free agency. And for the rest of these players, other than Greg Zerline, I was okay with letting them hit free agency. I slapped the franchise tag on Greg Zerline. I thought about putting on Janoris Jenkins, but I did not want to pay him $12.5 million. I thought I could negotiate a deal in the offseason to pay him a little bit less than that. So it's a little risky, but I know money's going to be tight with us trying to keep some high-profile players and needing to get a quarterback on this roster, whether it's Sam Bradford or somebody else. Just about time for unrestricted free agency. We have some news across the league as Tony Gonzalez retires again. Champ Bailey also retires. And coming out of retirement is Peyton Manning, making this free agent class of quarterbacks even more interesting, especially with Cam Newton getting the franchise tag from Jacksonville, as well as Robert Griffin III getting the tag from Washington. Obviously, the top priority was to analyze this quarterback market. We have to get a starting quarterback, whether it's giving Sam Bradford more money than I wish to in the first place, or somebody else. 
And on top of the list, we have Peyton Manning drawing interest from San Diego, and Sam Bradford has interest from the New York Giants. Ryan Tannehill is also available, but going down the list, not many potential starters. Maybe Nick Foles, Alex Smith. I had to make a decision about who we were going to offer a contract to, but that wasn't the only key position. Janoris Jenkins drawing interest from Seattle. We cannot let a big division rival snag our top corner. Jermaine Johnson, we see his market between 4 and $5 million a season. Some intriguing options down the board like Brandon Boykin and Nakib Tlaib. No contracts offered yet. We need defensive end help now with Robert Quinn perhaps not sticking around. He's drawing some interest from Buffalo and wants between 6 and $7 million a year it looks like. But it's very clear that we cannot keep all of our free agents for the price that they want. So now it was about prioritizing positions and which players I wanted to keep around the most. And my philosophy about building a defense is building around the secondary, and so we have to keep our number one corner. Janoris Jenkins, he wants more than $10 million a season. I'm willing to go that far. Remember, it was $12.5 million for the franchise tag, which I declined to use. Receiver is not a position of need for us, especially with our free agents, but with Alshon Jeffrey available and no teams pursuing him currently, I decided to throw an offer out there and see where that went. Back to Darren Bates now. He turned down our first offer. We're going to go up to about $2.7 million in total value. Not much interest around the league in him. But let's make our way back to quarterback. A lot of viewers wanted me to offer a contract to Ryan Tannehill, who's of course a great dual threat quarterback with a solid arm and speed. And then you have the future Hall of Famer Peyton Manning coming out of retirement at age 38. The arm strength has gone down a little bit, but the accuracy is still there. He can still sling it all over the field. There was also Sam Bradford, but I thought for the price, which Sam wanted around $10 million a season, we would be aggressive and pursue Peyton Manning with offering him a $15.4 million contract. We're also going for Tim Tebow. Although I did not want him to play quarterback for us, I wanted to move him to probably tight end. The first round of contracts had been offered. We'll go to the second part of free agency where Darren Bates has signed his deal, so he'll be returning. And we're also seeing more competition now for Janoris Jenkins. We see some of the first signings, including Robert Quinn, who is headed to the Buffalo Bills. So we know at least one player now is not returning, definitely. But with competition still going on for Peyton Manning and Janoris Jenkins, contracts were increased as we're trying to make a more aggressive push for two very game-changing players. Janoris Jenkins now with a $53 million offer on the table. And we're also going to throw an offer out to Brandon Boykin, who comes at about half the cost of Tremaine Johnson. And we have to save some money if we're going to pursue a $10 million corner and Peyton Manning at the same time. I increased offers multiple times just because these are two players that I really wanted. And missing out on them would have been very costly. But we did get Alshon Jeffrey to sign after Wave 2 of free agency. So we've only made our receiving core even more dangerous. And Sam Bradford has been taken off the market by the New York Giants. Who offered him an $11 million a year contract. So it's official. Sam Bradford is not returning. And maybe our aggressive push for Peyton Manning is paying off. The Chargers are now out of the race. Advancing further... Your new quarterback of the St. Louis Rams is Peyton Manning. And boy, did this make everybody excited. With Sam Bradford wanting $11 million, that put him out of my range, and I wanted to keep him around for the right price. But with a little bit more money, we now have Peyton Manning on the Rams. Seeing some more deals across the league here, we have Wes Welker going to the 49ers. The Seahawks get Aqib Tlaib. Ed Reed returns to the Ravens, and the Chiefs sign Nick Foles. The Bengals are the ones who end up with Tremaine Johnson at about $5 million a year, but we end up with Brandon Boykin for a much better value. Look at this. We have the Buffalo Bills giving Trent Richardson a $48.7 million contract, and Alfred Morris also gets over $9 million a year. And by the way, Janoris Jenkins is staying here in St. Louis. The aggressiveness paid off in free agency. A little bit of bad news for us is that Levante David signed with the Seahawks and we have to play against him along with Bobby Wagner twice a year. And with that, free agency has finally come to an end. It got off to an interesting start with almost nobody wanting to re-sign with us. No starters were interested. But when the dust finally settled, we ended up with Peyton Manning, keeping Janoris Jenkins, got Alshon Jeffrey, and Brandon Boykin. Now we can head on to the draft where we have two first-round picks. 
This is going to be fun. And one of the guys I was targeting was Duke Johnson. He is a speedster. And I wanted to take Tavon Austin off kick returns because I'm worried about him staying healthy. I felt that Duke Johnson would be a very adequate replacement. To the draft we go, and the Tennessee Titans are on the clock with a number one overall pick, and they select the number one quarterback available, Trayvon Boykin from TCU. Our picks in the first round were at 15-32, and 32 as the Arizona Cardinals, a division rival, take Jared Wilson, a strong safety. But I was incredibly relieved to not have to take a rookie quarterback and roll the dice on one of these prospects. Todd Gurley was a running back that I was hoping could fall to us somehow, but the Lions take him at 6, and Melvin Gordon goes at 7 to the Bills. And with the running backs coming off the board, I wanted to trade up and make sure we could get our guy, but the Giants were not interested. We had to make it to 15, the Browns. They take Vad Lee, a quarterback. The Pittsburgh Steelers. They take Denzel Kimdichie, which means the Vikings are the only team between us and Duke Johnson. And the Minnesota Vikings took Duke Johnson right in front of us, although they did not need him one bit. So we had to do a change of plans. With Robert Quinn leaving to Buffalo, a defensive end was a big need, and so we drafted Noah Spence from Ohio State with our first first-round pick. Now to our second at number 32 overall. Again targeting a running back, you can see all the names available. And I decided to draft TJ Yeldon, and I did not expect him to be the Tavon Austin replacement for returning, but what I was hoping was that if Ben Tate ever goes down, I think he could be an adequate replacement. Now on the second round, again looking at defensive ends, I let three of them walk. I think Everson Griffin might be able to start, but we still have to draft a couple to get some depth. So we take Eli Harold. Third round now, we're going to stay on the defensive line. This time it's Davian Pearson from TCU, a fifth round prospect that I thought was a bit of a gem. And so we snagged him while we could. In the fourth round, we're still looking at defense, possibly a corner, maybe another linebacker. I, I've been talking about getting a designated pass coverage guy for our nickel packages that can take care of tight ends, but there wasn't one that I saw that could do that in this draft class, so I took Cortez Johnson instead, thinking about playing him more at safety than corner. In the sixth round now, we're going to go back to the running back well with Jonathan Gray. Now this is who I thought could possibly be the Tavon Austin replacement and return some kicks for us. Seventh round, we're going to take some chances on a couple players. I want to get some more linebacker depth. We first get Quan Alexander, and then with the final pick, Mr. Irrelevant, we are taking MJ Sullahudden, a middle linebacker from NC State, to get that linebacker competition ready. It was a defensive draft class for us. We did get a couple running backs, but everybody else, defense. We have to replace three starters with Robert Quinn gone, Michael Brockers, as well as Tremaine Johnson. And each one of those spots is up to competition in the preseason. I'm not giving anybody the starting job at either of those positions. We'll see how things go in the preseason. And I'm looking forward to it. Here's a quick look at the top players on our roster. But I am ready for season four, guys. This was an exciting offseason. It looked a little scary at first. But I think we made some good decisions. And we'll see this team in action in the preseason up next against the 49ers, Giants, Eagles, and Redskins. So yes, we are going to play against Sam Bradford. And then we made some more signings just to get ready for the preseason. Michael Agnew, Pat White, Jeff Toole, and Robert Blanton. We'll have some third quarterback competition going on. But thank you guys for watching. That is the offseason. I believe this team is ready for another Super Bowl run. Season 4 is on the way. We'll start it off with the preseason as I'll recap each one of those games in one video and show the highlights and anything you need to know before Season 4 truly begins with the regular season in Week 1, which I'm not sure of our schedule at this point. But I am looking forward to it, guys, and I hope you are as well. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you have not already, and I'll see you guys in the preseason of St. Louis Rams Connected Franchise Season 4. Have a great day, guys, and I'll see you then.